All right, for those of you who are still on the fence about the semiconductor stocks, if you're wary of this group, because historically it's been a boom and bust business, and this boom has to be running out of juice, right? Today we got yet another piece of evidence that the space will keep roaring for quite some time. Remember, the personal computer is growing again, which means all the chips that go into them are growing too, but boy, that, that's not enough for you. Then today, Kramer Fave Lam Research, the big semiconductor capital equipment maker, held an analyst and investor day, where management told a very compelling story, and the stock caught fire, pole vaulting $9.00. 74 cents or 4.91 percent. Lamb is doing extremely well at the moment, so well that the company told us it's doing it, going to increase the dividend by 120 percent, more than double, while also adding two billion to the buyback on top of the two billion that's left from the re repurchase authorization the company announced back in November. Nothing says we're confident about our long-term prospects like a monster buyback and a monster dividend boost. Don't take it from me though. Let's check in with Martin Ansis. He's the CEO of Lamb Research to get a better sense of where his company is headed, and I'm telling you, it is headed higher. Martin, good to see you. Jim good to have you here, of course. Have a much. seat. It's a pleasure. To be Martin, here. this presentation was extraordinary for multiple reasons, but I'd say that one of the things that was the theme, and I talked about at the top of the show, more data generated, stored, analyzed. You can't live without, we can't live anymore without LAM research, can we? I think that's, that's a good headline. Uh, you know, there's, there are two messages, really, that we delivered today. One of them is the insatiable appetite for data, as right. you've just, uh, you just alluded to. Really, data is a disruptor in every part of our life. It has the potential to create enormous value, enormous productivity. And uh, right at the center of making that possible is the role of silicon. And the role of silicon is where LAM Research gets to play a big enabler and a big technology contribution role. Well, you're talking about smart home, 50 billion connected devices, smart industry, one petabyte, uh, mobile, autonomous car, four terabytes. By 2020, you, did you make this term up? 67 zettabytes? Uh, no, didn't make the term up. <laughs> 21 zeros, by the way, in a zettabyte. So it's a lot of data, and it's not the data of old. It's not the structured data of spreadsheets. Right. It's now unstructured data, and the value proposition comes from insight and action, which requires very, very high performance compute, which is the leading edge silicon story. Well, the reason I, I'm making the zettabyte is joke is, is that this is something that does not sound like, well, you know what, when the GDP goes down, this gets crushed, and then it goes up, it gets strong again. That seems like it has, that has nothing to do with any business cycle in the world. No, it's, it's very fundamental. I mean, the socioeconomic challenges of the world today have no practical alternative in terms of a solution set than artificial intelligence and cognitive decision support. And that's, that's the role of big data, and that's the role of silicon, and that's the role of land research. Climate change, education, food and water, health care. These are now where land research plays? Absolutely. Autonomous vehicles. You know, judging by the amount of time it took me to get to your studio today, uh, there's plenty of opportunity for, for global gridlock to be solved by autonomous vehicles and smart infrastructure. And that's a great example where silicon is playing a much bigger role. If you look at the amount of data that is in the roadmap of autonomous vehicles, uh, four terabytes of data uh, being able to sense from a car per day. Um, a, an autonomous vehicle is capable of extracting more data than an average server is able to store today. There are eight times the amount of automos, automotives manufactured every year than servers. This is a tremendous opportunity. Well, why, the why won't these cars cost a million dollars? They won't cost a billion dollars because one of the historical attributes of this industry, the silicon industry, is a perpetual commitment to performance improvements and cost reduction. So there are three drivers, really. Connectivity, cloud, computation, and cost. Well, okay, because when I look at uh, I worry. Okay, let me give you my worry. Yep. I, when I hear from the from personal computer companies, when I hear from some of the DRAM prices keep going up, yep. I have to wonder at a certain point yep. whether they can make the product and make any money, get a return if the DRAMs are going up so high. Yep. I think it's really a commentary on sustainability. I mean, that's the essence of your question. Um, and the investments that our customers are making today have never been more valuable. The value proposition today is entirely different. There are ROI is entirely different. The investments by our customers while they may be the highest in history, right. as a percentage of their profitability, they are lower today than at any point in a 15-year period. There is health in the ecosystem. Right. The semiconductor industry has added $100 billion to revenues in the last five years. The cloud community, the top seven right. cloud companies, have added $200 billion to the revenues with a 20% CAGR 
and a 30% operating income. There is health in the ecosystem, and that's a big part of the sustainability. And is that why, why your board was able to do something that I've not seen uh, companies do? It's a big part of how we think about delivering value to our shareholders. You know, our primary focus is on vesting in the profitable growth of our company, right. and when we have cash that's excess to that need, returning it to our shareholders. Why aren't you more worried? I mean, historically, we're supposed to be worried about land research at this stage of the cycle. I think I closed my prepared comments today in our analyst meeting with we live in an entirely different world. We are a different industry and a different company. Uh, and, and everything in your question really characterizes how important that is to understand. Well, we're finally there. You told us it would be there, and we're finally there. This is not your parents or, of course, my generation's LAM research. That's Martin Ness. He's the CEO of LAM. This stock's been stuck in a range for a long time, and I think that range is now no longer going to be able to contain the stock. Man, money's back in the break. Booyah! Jim Cramer here from Mad Money. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube. Click here to subscribe and get the jump on my exclusives with CEOs, plus market news, investing advice, and a whole lot more.